A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Explain stuff. Hey everyone, Dr. D here, and in this video we are going to be covering a little bit of chapter 17, which deals with biotechnology and genomics. This is from our sampling biology second edition from OpenStax. Let's go ahead and get started. We have all different kinds of tools that we can use uh, in the lab to analyze the world around us and understand biology better and also to help humanity with diseases, infection, and to help out with products that we could make from uh, using these biotechnologies that, that uh, exist today. That what you're seeing here on the left, this is called a microarray and what it allows scientists to do is determine what genes are turned on and what genes are turned off in a particular organism. And we can use these types of microarrays to look at organisms within a, a, a range, a, a, an area. We could compare different species with one another. We could compare the same species from two different locations. And we can look at differences in their uh, gene responses and how genes turn on, genes turn off. So it's a great way for us to look at how genes turn on and off. So what I would like you to know about microarrays is that it's a way for us to study which genes turn on and which genes turn off uh, in an organism. Here's another amazing tool that has, you know, that biology has brought to us. It was actually Alexander Fleming who uh, discovered penicillin. And penicillin is a type of antibiotic from a mold. And this mold is called penicillium. With the help of this protein that's secreted by uh, penicillium called penicillin, uh, it was discovered that this, and this is an antibiotic, it kills bacteria, right? And now we can, you know, we can take penicillin and a host of other antibiotics in order to treat infections, bacterial infections. Another technique that's commonly used is DNA extraction. We could take cells in a test tube, we could lyse the cells with a detergent, uh, lysing means breaking open the cells with the detergent. Then the cell contents are treated with protease. Protease is a enzyme that breaks down proteins. And we also treat it with RNase. RNase is an enzyme that destroys RNA. We then take the cell debris and make it into a pellet. And then we transfer the supernatant, you know, the liquid on top, which should contain DNA to another tube and then the DNA is then extracted. It's precipitated with ethanol, with ethanol, with alcohol. And now we can take the DNA and we, we can extract DNA and study DNA. What are some of the studies we can do with DNA? We could look at DNA in a gel, and this is uh, you know, a, a gel run of DNA. We could look at different bands that form. We could digest the DNA with restriction enzymes and run it on a gel. And you see here, everywhere you see a band, everywhere you see a band, that's a fragment of DNA. And the lighter fragments of DNA travel faster than the longer fragments of DNA on the gel. And this really is a gel. It's called an agarose gel. Now, one of the most interesting techniques to come about uh, was PCR. You may have heard of PCR. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. It's a technique to amplify a specific sequence of DNA. How do you do it? You have to take short primers, short pieces of DNA, which are complementary to each end of the target sequence, you know, the sequence you're trying to amplify. And those short pieces of DNA, if you look here, those short pieces of DNA attach to each side, each flank of the DNA you are trying to amplify. You then 
use a thermocycler. This is a device that heats up the DNA and then cools down the DNA. This allows the DNA to separate from one another. And then once you have the, the thermocycler and the primers in place, you can use what's called TAC polymerase. This is a enzyme which amplifies DNA and it is from Thermus aquaticus which is a uh, which is a organism that can withstand high temperatures uh, we don't want our polymerase to get denatured in the thermocycler because the thermocycler makes the temperature hot it makes the temperature cold and so we've taken a, an enzyme from a thermophile an organism that grows in the heat and we use that for our PCR so let's go through this step by step. Step one is denaturation. We take our double strand DNA, we then heat it up. That separates the two strands of DNA from one another. That's called denaturation. And then step two is called annealing. We cool down the DNA, we cool it down so that our primers, our short stretches of DNA, which are complementary to the fragment of DNA we want to amplify, they will attach here and here. And then we have DNA synthesis. At this point we warm it up a little bit uh, and here you have DNA the DNA polymerase the TAC polymerase will build upon these primers it will build upon these primers see so we're going to get DNA polymerase building and the fragments will build and fragments will build and this is an exponential magnification exponential proliferation of the DNA so we're going to end up with millions of copies, millions of copies of this fragment that we're interested in. And again, we could run that out on a gel and we could see the result on a gel. This would be the fragment, for instance, that we amplified. So again, what do I want you to know about PCR, or polymerase chain reaction? I want you to know that it is a technique that scientists can use to amplify a segment of DNA so that they can study that segment of DNA. What else? Here's another interesting technique. It's called southern blotting. In southern blotting, you're able to look at segments of DNA. You're able to visualize segments of DNA on a gel using a probe. Okay? We don't need to go through all of the, the, the steps to this, but it's another technique for finding a particular sequence of DNA uh, using a gel and a nylon membrane. We can also clone DNA. We can clone pieces of DNA. Now when you're cloning DNA, it just means you're going to make many copies of that particular fragment of DNA. And how do we do this? In order to clone DNA, we're going to take plasmids and foreign DNA we're going to introduce the foreign DNA into the plasmid, and the plasmid is simply a circularized piece of DNA. We can then introduce this DNA into bacteria, and the bacteria will grow, and we can select for the DNA on a plate. Now, molecular cloning, this type of cloning, clones DNA, but what you think of cloning is probably what you think of when you think Dolly the sheep. This is cloning animals. How does that work? What kind of technique do we use here? In this technique, we take a donor animal and we take an egg. We take an egg from a donor. We then enucleate the egg, which means we remove the genome from this egg. We can take a, 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 a donor, a nuclear donor animal, which we want to clone. So we want to clone this sheep. We could take some cells from this sheep, some, you know, uh, skin cells called fibroblasts from this sheep. We can then take the DNA from these cells and introduce it into the egg, which was enucleated. And then this egg will divide. This, this egg will then divide into what's known as a blastocyst or the early embryo. This blastocyst is then uh, used to impregnate the surrogate uh, sheep and then we form 
the, the clone. And Dolly would be a clone of this donor, this nuclear donor sheep. This is how cloning works. So what do I want you to know? I want you to know that in cloning, we can clone animals. So we can clone animals by taking donor eggs, taking the DNA out, that's called enucleation. And then we can introduce the DNA of the animal we want to clone into the egg. And this results in a blastocyst the blastocyst is used to make the clone. Another thing that's hot right now in the field of biotechnology is uh, called gene therapy. And what we can do is take modified genes, put them inside of viruses, and then inject the viruses into the patient. And the viruses will infect the patient's cell and deliver the modified genes to the patient. We can also genetically modify organisms, right? We have genetically modified corn. Have you heard of GMOs? These are genetically modified organisms. We can use these genetic techniques I showed you earlier in order to make genetically modified crops. And these crops can grow in drought conditions. These crops might be more resistant to pests. Uh, these crops can have a number of features which makes them easier to grow uh, in different climates and environments. Here's another very interesting technique. We can use modified nucleotides called dideoxynucleotides. We can use them to sequence DNA. Um, we know how to sequence DNA so that we can figure out the specific order of nucleotides within the DNA. This is called DNA sequencing. This is how we solve genomes and know what the genomes say. All right, and that about wraps it up with this short chapter, just a primer on biotechnology. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below. And I'll catch you guys next time. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. A Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D. Dr. D, Dr. D, Dr. D.